Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. Well, speaking of the Big East, Fanta, really quick, this reminds me, Donovan Klingon, foot injury, out for a month. I know you reported on this on Friday night. The, uh, the Huskies did a great job leaking this news as late as possible on a Friday. That's what we like to call a Friday news dump. I was already three sheets to the wind in Nashville, uh, so I haven't thought about this for more than about 30 seconds, but... Uh, what's it mean? How long is he out for? How bad is this foot strain that he's dealing with? Well, there is optimism that Donovan Klingon will be able to play in UConn season opener on November 6th when they take on Northern Arizona. It doesn't sound like, by any account that I've heard, that that there's worry that this is going to bleed into the season. The only natural concern or worry is separate this situation and, and put it with any situation with the big man is that a foot injury carries its own variables and variants on whether or not it can linger. UConn medical staff believes that it will not linger, believes that this is a simple foot strain, that it will take the four or five weeks to recover, and that Donovan Klingon is going to show up in stores on November the 6th and be ready to play for the Connecticut Huskies. This could have been a lot worse, guys. We know with big men, when they have a foot injury, it, it can sometimes be a, a very big problem. By all accounts, this does not look like it is going to be a big problem or a big worry for the Connecticut Huskies. There's optimism that he will make a full recovery and be ready to go for the season. So knock on wood. I hope that's the last time we hear of any, I know it won't be, of any preseason injury news for any great players in college basketball. Then I won't mention that RJ Luis just broke his, uh, I think he broke his hand. So we won't mention that. One more, we're not going to mention it, not going to talk about it, pretend it's not going to happen. Big loss, expected to start at the three for uh, Rick Patino. The good news is that Patino brought in 17 uh, new players this offseason. So at the very least, he has bodies available. Um, the one thing, T.O., I will say about Klingon is that UConn's probably not going to need him. Uh, for at least uh, the first two weeks of the season. I don't think that they need him to beat Northern Arizona. I don't think that they need him to beat Stonehill. I don't think that they need him to beat Mississippi Valley State. It's that Indiana game. But as you always say, big guys and bad feet is not a great combination. Yeah, it's 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 unfortunate, but I'm glad that it it isn't as bad as what we thought. And before I before I went on my little uh, tangent there, you showed a Khalid El uh He signed the, the thing for Top Dogs a couple of years ago. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Khalid, I played against Khalid in Ukraine. You wanted me to tell this on the air, so I'll tell it. But we we I played two games, and they were spread apart by about three weeks. The first one was like a cup game. It didn't really have any matter. And we got done, and I played. We went up to – that was that trip that I had to go like 18 hours in a bus, get off the bus, play the game, get back on the bus, go 18 hours back. And I played really well that game. And I was like, well, he's, he's pretty good, like – Whatever, but the game didn't matter. I was naive. I didn't know any better. Three weeks later, going into the Christmas break, they come in. My man took it easy for the first quarter and ended up with 35 and 12 and ran out of the gym with two minutes to go so he could catch a flight to go home for Christmas. <laughs> like he just felt like he was just, he, he was unbelievably wow. good. Wow. And it was just, he was one of those guys that over there, like he had his, he had some proud, like as far as, his height, he looked overweight, but he was always able to manage how he played the game. But like he just knew how to play and he could turn it on and off whenever he wanted. Like he was he was really good. But I thought it was unique. He knew what was at stake with the cup game, which was basically nothing. And then what was at stake at the regular season, which is basically everything. And he went he goes for 35 and 12 wow. just because he knew this game mattered more. Like guys, guys who can do that, they usually do it later in their career because they understand you know, which games are more important to make more money for the following season. He was, he was really, really good. And he ran out of the gym. Didn't, didn't shake hands with anybody. Ran. Didn't wave by, just ran out, caught a cab, didn't shower on his way back to wherever. Big news. The Almanac is officially back. The most exhaustive and comprehensive guide to the 2023-24 college basketball season is available for pre-order now. 
If you go to cbbalmanac.com, link is in the description below, you can pre-order for just $15.99 or 20% off the sticker price. The format is going to be a little bit different this season. Instead of an 850 page PDF, you'll be getting access to the full site with league by league PDFs available for download. The preview will be live on September 20th. So you have until then to be able to get your pre-orders in. So for insight for all 362 division one teams from their head coaches and the experts that cover them, make sure you hit that link. Well, Minnesota, that's where he lives. But can you imagine sitting next to Khalid el on a flight from the Ukraine to Minnesota after he just played a basketball game without showering? <laughs> Woo! It was quick. Yeah, it was it, it was a quick... He got out of there fast. Like, I've never seen it. They're like, hey, you got to go. And he flew out of Odessa. It's crazy. All right. You guys I ready hope, to talk about I the hope. Big Ten? You ready to break mm-hmm. down the Big Ten, Fana? You have any other I'm Khalid el stories that you want to share with us? No, I, I was just going to say, as much as that was probably rough for whoever was sitting with him, there's, we've all had even worse plane experiences. Yeah, all of mine, all of mine involve my children. All of my worst plane experiences involve <laughs> my children and air sickness. It's uh, so my worst one, my worst one. I think I've told this actually. Have I told you guys the story of the candy bar and the airplane? Nope. <laughs> No, nope. I haven't told you that one. No, so, you must have uh, talked to another Rob and John. <laughs> no, so I'm leaving from Norway. We're coming back home after visiting family. I'm 15, 16 years old. You know, that time where you get really embarrassed, like easily embarrassed. And Norwegian chocolate is like gold to me. It is the best chocolate in the world. And by far, like without a quite without the shadow of a doubt, it's my favorite thing about going over there is the sweets. I buy the hazelnut chocolate bar, which is about oh. I don't know, six by three. Well, it's bigger, double the size of a Kit Kat because you buy them, you buy them big and there's hazelnuts in it. And because we're in a hurry, I put it in my back pocket (laughs) and I sit down in my seat and I forget it's there. (laughs) And we're about two hours into the flight. I stand up Oh no! and it looks like I have shat the seat (laughs) all (laughs) over the place. (laughs) And not only is there chocolate, there is nuts all over it that are ingrained within the chocolate, which basically doubled down of old T.O. pooed his pants on an intercontinental flight. So I was going over the big pond and I had, uh, it looked like I had just gone full. What was the lady who did that a couple of weeks ago and then got back on the flight going back to Paris? Brutal. So, like crazy situation. Everybody thought I'd diarrhea up and down the, up and down the hallway. <laughs> yeah. And then when I was picking it up, I was licking my fingers and like, people were like, worried. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Hey, <laughs> so hey! I'm picking up. I'm picking up. I'm picking up the candy bar. People think it's dump, and I'm licking my fingers as I'm picking it up. Yeah, it was, it was a brutal situation. Fam. Hey, the the contract signed, Bally. It's too late. The contract signed. He there's a reason why he's only doing the home games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, not, they're not sending me on the road, baby. They're not sending me on the road. The yeah. the worst one that I had, and I'll keep it brief, was uh, we were flying back from Hawaii. And we went from Honolulu to Atlanta. My son was about 20 months old. Um, and uh, at the very end of the flight, he got car sick as, or uh, air sick as the plane. Like there was some turbulence on the way down. So he got air sick and he threw up what used to be strawberry yogurt, like all over all of our stuff, all over me, all over him. He's upset. He wants to get changed. Um, and he's sitting there just crying. And like we're in the, it's one of those planes where it's like three aisle, three aisle, three. So it's like nine across and I'm sitting on the left-hand seat and the woman right across the aisle from me, like taps me on the arm and she's just like, just so you know, um, he's probably crying because he needs to pop his ears and it gets a lot of pressure in their ears when they land. And I just wanted to look at her and be like, do you see what I'm covered with right now? You think <laughs> that this what was this, right strawberry here, yogurt. Yeah. Do you think that this right here is helping me in this situation? Like, I, I I think you're trying to be nice, but like, also just shut the fuck up and let me clean up the puke that is all over Ugh. all of my stuff, my bag, my phone, my laptop, my everything. It was, that was, it probably uh, had that acidic smell from the yogurt too. Oh, that was, that was not fun. Um, oh, and then to, we, the only 
pair of clothes that we had available to us that my son could put on in any of our carry-ons was <laughs> was a like a swimsuit and one of like the swimming shirts you know that you put kids in so he had on like yeah. a bright green swimming outfit on the last leg of the flight after our conviction which was uh which was fun all right thank you for watching the field of 68 if you've enjoyed what you've seen here hit that like button share this link with your friends or check out the description for some other places that you can consume field of 68 content